Today, I'm gonna go over 50 shocking Pokedex entries from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And also, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, but we'll get into that at the end of the video. Let's do this. Skelly Dirge. The fiery bird changes shape when Skelly Dirge sings. Rumor has it that the bird was born when the fireball on Skelly Dirge's head gained a soul. That's probably one of the most lore-inducing starter Pokemon Dex entries we've ever had. But at the same time, I can't really picture Skelly Dirge, a crocodile, singing. Like, how would he even move his mouth appropriately? Quaxly. This Pokemon migrated to Paldea from distant lands long ago. The gel secreted by its feathers repel water and grime. Well, I think this is another first where we have a starter Pokemon that's not even native to their own region. And some fans are speculating that Quaxly migrated from the Canary Islands, just on the coast of Morocco. So maybe we'll see the DLC down there or a future region in the African continent. Tarantula. The ball of threads wrapped around its body is elastic enough to deflect the size of Scyther, this Pokemon's natural enemy. I just find it so cool that we have a Generation 9 Pokemon that has a natural enemy from all the way back from Generation 1. It's fun to think about these two Pokemon duking it out in Generation 1 graphics. Jumpluff. Jumpluff travels on seasonal winds. Once its cotton spores run out, its journey ends, as does its life. Well, that's pretty grim and new information on this 20 year old Pokemon. So you're telling me every time Jumpluff uses cotton spore, it's releasing some of its life energy? Dang. Corviknight. Corviknight can't serve as a taxi service in Paldea because the Pokemon's natural predators will attack it while it flies, endangering the customer. I find this one pretty funny, but I don't want to spoil why yet. Later in this video, you'll find out who that predatory Pokemon is, and it's not going to be what you expect. Mosshold. The little one just appeared one day. They all live together like a family, but the relationship between the three is still unclear. Well, I'll make it clear. The two mouse had fun under the covers and then popped a new one, or two. I find this dex entry pretty humorous. Copperaya. This Pokemon was brought to Paldea long ago by people from a faraway land. It's so strong that it can easily pull an airplane. That is now the third dex entry that has referenced an Indian region that these elephants are native to, with the first one being from Raichu's Fire Red dex entry where it states that it can cause an Indian elephant to faint. And then of course Copperaya's Sword dex entry where it states something similar. So I definitely think the next Pokemon region is going to take place in India. There's just no way that it won't. Garganical. Garganical will rub his fingertips together and sprinkle injured Pokemon with salt. Even severe wounds will probably heal afterwards. I just love that imagery of imagining Garnicle rubbing his hands together and producing salt. I swear there's a character from some video game or anime that did the same thing, but I just can't think of them. Also, I wonder if a slug would heal from his salt, like Gastrodon. We'll have to put that to the test. Dedene. It's small and its electricity generating organ is not fully developed, so it uses its tail to absorb electricity from people's homes and charge itself. First of all, that's extremely cute. But more importantly, second of all, this deck entry makes it seem that Dedene is not fully evolved and more of a baby Pokemon. So maybe we'll see an evolution of it in the future. Graphii. Each Graphii paints its own individual pattern, and it will paint the same pattern over and over again throughout its life. That makes me wonder how rare it'd be for two Graphii to have the same draw pattern. Kind of like Spinda. If it's anything like human fingerprints, then it'd probably be around 1 in 64 trillion chance. And I bring up human fingerprints because Graphii paints with his fingers. So it'd be quite rare. Fungus. There is a theory that the developer of the modern day Pokeball really liked Fungus, but this has not been confirmed. So this is like the chicken or the egg paradox, which came first? Was it Fungus that inspired the modern Pokeball design, or vice versa? It becomes even more confusing with Amoogus' dex entry where it states that it mimics a Pokeball. So this is kind of a plot hole in Pokemon. Gothitelle. Gothitelle unleashes psychic energy and shows opponents dreams of the universe's end. These dreams are apparently ethereal and beautiful. That's probably one of the most wild dex entries I've ever read. And I guess it's good to know that the universe's impending doom is at least beautiful. And this also confirms that the Pokemon universe will in fact end. But I wonder by who? Sinistee. Some fanatics will go to great plans to prepare the perfect tea and tea cup, eagerly waiting for a Sinistee to come and possess their selections. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds like such a fun thing to do. It's almost like summoning a Poltegeist with a Ouija board. But the difference with this is that it actually happens. I'd probably go buy a really fancy tea cup if this were me. Mimikyu. Mimikyu was only recently identified as a Pokemon. Previously, people thought it was just a ghost wearing a cloth. Well, I guess this is even further confirmation that ghosts are just a thing in Pokemon. So we have ghosts, vampires, psychics, and something else from outer space. But I don't want to spoil that just yet. Bramblin. A soul unable to move on to the afterlife was blown around by the wind until it got tangled up with dry grass and became a Pokemon. Man, it really shows the importance of Pokemon like Dustor and Asui and Typhlosion, because without them leading souls to the afterlife, the soul could end up like Bramblin. And I guess this gives us a glimpse of what a Pokemon soul looks like. By looking at Bramblin's eyes, I'm going to assume that's what it is. 
Relor. This Pokemon creates a mud ball by mixing sand and dirt with psychic energy. It treasures its mud ball more than its own life. This is such a funny dex entry because Relor is based on a dung beetle. And if you didn't know, dung beetles are known for rolling poop. So this Pokemon literally values a ball of poop more than itself. Also, fun fact, its shiny form has a golden ball of poop. So funny. Rabska, the body that supports the ball barely moves. Therefore, it is thought that the true body of this Pokemon is actually inside the ball. And then for his Violet Dex history, it says, An infant sleeps inside the ball. Rabska rolls the ball soothingly with his legs to ensure the infant sleeps comfortably. This is such a strange Pokemon because it's like Wobbuffet. Its quote unquote true body is actually inside of the ball. And supposedly, it's an infant? Kinda reminds me of Pokey from Earthbound. But yeah, I guess this is another Pokemon that we'll never know the true identity of. And speaking of which, y'all should check out my 10 Pokemon you've never seen before video. Rasko would definitely fall perfectly in it. Tinkatuff. This Pokemon will attack groups of Ponyard and Bisharp, gathering metal from them in order to create a large and sturdy hammer. And then as Violet Dysentry reads, These Pokemon make their homes a pile of scrap metal. They test the strength of each other's hammers by smashing them together. So that means Tinkatuff's hammer is made out of Ponyard limbs. And the reason why it's a steel type is because it's unlived several Ponyards. That's pretty grim, but also awesome. Tinkaton. This intelligent Pokemon is a very daring disposition. It knocks rocks into the sky with its hammer, aiming for flying Corviknight. Yeah, so not only does the Tinkaton line hunt Bisharp and use their metal to make their hammers and nests, but they also hunt Corviknight for sport. This is truly one of the most terrifying Pokemon out there, but I love it. Hatrim. The moment this Pokemon finds someone who's emitting strong emotions, it will pummel them senseless with its braids to silence them. This is like Drampo level of funny dex entry, which if you didn't know, Drampo will literally go burn someone's house to the ground if they bully his trainer. But this is just straight up funnier. I can only imagine someone crying and then being smacked in the face by Hatrim, especially if it's their own Pokemon. Palafin. This hero of the ocean swims at a speed of 50 knots and saves drowning people and Pokemon. And then in Zero Dice that you reads, this Pokemon changes its appearance if it hears allies calling for help. Palafin will never show anybody its moment of transformation. So to put it simply, this is quite literally the superhero of Pokemon. Because it has a secret identity in a Zero form, and then like Superman, it swims in a seaweed alleyway and changes form to save the day. Which I absolutely love. Varum. It is said that this Pokemon was born when an unknown poison Pokemon entered and a spirited an engine left at a scrap processing factory. What an interesting way for the first poison steel type Pokemon to come to life. I wonder if this poison type happened to be a ghost type as well. How would it even possess this machinery otherwise? If I were to guess, it was probably a Ghastly. But if it wasn't, then that is yet another unidentified Pokemon that we will probably never see. <laughs> Which is yet another video I covered in the past. Rotomo. This lawnmower is one of the household appliances that led to the development of the Rotom Dex. Wow, that is just simply interesting. I really have nothing else to add except for that's awesome. Rotom Wash. The model of washing machine that Rotom can spirit has been discontinued, so these appliances are now traded at high prices. Well, that's really interesting too, and kind of reminds me of the Sinistry Dex entry. I guess in the Pokemon world getting edge of the competitive scene, you have to pay a pretty penny to get that bulky Rotom Wash set. And also, this confirms that Rotom can't inspirit anything. It has to have some kind of specific entryway or something for Rotom. Shellos. It used to have a shell on its back long ago. This species is closely related to Pokemon like Shelder. Well, I guess we now know where Shellos gets its name from. And like a lot of its dice entries, it has a common ancestor with Shelder. I just wonder how Shelder got the harder than diamond shell while Shellos lost his shell. Must have been very extreme differences in their climates. Gastrodon. It appears on beaches where waters are shallow. Once it catches prey, it will slowly melt them with its mucus before slurping them up. Wow, that is just terrifying. That's gotta be top three most disturbing Pokedex entries of all time. Satoddle. This species left the ocean and began living on land a very long time ago. It seems to be closer related to a Whalmer. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I was not a fan of this Pokemon at all when I saw its evolution in the trailer. But now that I know it's a Terra Whale, something I've never seen in a fantasy game before, that is just awesome. Now I want Terra Whales to exist in real life. King Gambit. Only a Bisharp that stands above all others in a vast army can evolve into King Gambit. I was never really a fan of Bisharp, but this new evolution for it is just downright awesome. I freaking love this Pokemon, and the concept behind it being the best of the best Bisharp is just a cherry on top. Oh, also his name is amazing, because if you didn't know, I'm a pretty avid chess player, and the Bisharp line are based on chess pieces. Well, with King Gambit, it is definitely based on the King's Gambit, which is an opening for White where he sacrifices a pawn on F4. So I wonder if King Gambit has to sacrifice a few pawn yards in order to evolve. That'd be pretty hardcore. Dino. It can't see, so its first approach to examining things is to bite them. You will be covered in wounds until a dino warms up to you. That is really cute, but also sounds very painful. Tatsuguri. It's one of the most intelligent dragon Pokemon. It camouflages itself by inflating its throat sac. 
That is so cool that this tiny dragon Pokemon is supposed to be one of the smartest in the world. And I don't doubt it because the Pokemon Don Dezo has a Dyson tree where it states that it treats Tatsuguri as a boss. Also, can I just say that I love this type combination? This might be one of my favorite Pokemon of all time now. Screamtail. It resembles a mysterious Pokemon described in a paranormal magazine as Julipuff from 1 billion years ago. Well, that literally blows out every ancient Pokemon in terms of how old they are, because before this, it was Genesis that had the record with 300 million years ago in his Dex entry. So, this is the biggest time jump we've ever seen with a Pokemon. Well, besides Arceus and the Creation Trio. So this is what Pokemon looked like a billion years ago. Kind of nuts. Brute Bonnet. It bears a slight resemblance to a Pokemon described in a dubious magazine as a cross between a dinosaur and a mushroom. So not only have they confirmed Pokemon from a billion years ago, but now they have confirmed that dinosaurs existed in the Pokemon world. And I'm pretty sure this is the first mission of dinosaurs in Pokemon. So does that mean that dinosaurs are different than Pokemon? And this is the first crossbreed of them? I'm not gonna lie, dinosaurs must have looked really weird in the Pokemon universe if this is half of one. And how would one even crossbreed with a mushroom? This has to be the case of a Pokemon and dinosaur coming together. Sandy Shocks. It slightly resembles a Manaton that lived for 10,000 years and was featured in an article in a paranormal magazine. So this is what an ancient Manaton looks like, and I guess this confirms that Manaton can live for thousands of years. Also, there's a fun easter egg with Sandy Shocks, since supposedly it's an ancient form of Magneton, if you notice, it doesn't have the steel typing, which may be a reference to Magneton from Generation 1, when the steel type wasn't a thing, which is pretty cool. Iron Jugulus. It resembles a certain Pokemon introduced in a paranormal magazine, described as the offspring of Hydreigon that fell in love with a robot. This generation of Pokemon is wild because not along with there being dinosaurs from the past, but there are sentient robots in the future, branching yet another category of species in the Pokemon world. And supposedly this is what it looks like when a Pokemon and robot breed. Pretty epic. Iron Moth. This Pokemon resembles an unknown object described in a paranormal magazine as a UFO said to observe humanity. I find it really interesting that Volcarona got two Paradox forms. I wonder if there's something to that. But nonetheless, this Dex entry confirms that aliens exist in the Pokemon world. So now we have ghosts, vampires, psychics, dinosaurs, sentient robots, and now aliens that supposedly observe us from outer space. It really makes you wonder if any of the NPCs that we've encountered in the previous Pokemon game was actually an undercover alien. For all we know, Whitney could have been an alien. Or even your mom. Iron Thorns. It has some similarities to a Pokemon introduced in a dubious magazine as a Tyranitar from 1 billion years in the future. This one is absolutely crazy because this is the biggest time jump in the future that we've ever seen in Pokemon. Well, if you don't count Gothel seeing the end of the universe. But nonetheless, it is really cool seeing what Pokemon will look like in a billion years. And I'm not sure if a lot of us can grasp just how far in the future that is. I mean, Earth is only 4.5 billion years old, so this is nearly a fifth of the Earth's lifespan in the future. Also, I wonder if the magazine they mission is reference to the 1997 magazine cover of Tyranitar before it was even a Pokemon, where they did an interview with Kinsugamori. That'd be pretty cool if so. Oh, also, fun fact, futuristic Tyranitar was already a thing in Pokestar Studios, so literally black and white predicted the future, like, twice. Wu Xin, the grudge of a person punished for writing the king's evil deeds upon wooden tablets, has clad itself in dead leaves to become a Pokemon. Okay, hands down, this is the most lore inducing Pokedex entry that we've ever had, no doubt about it. And this is a legendary Pokemon, so I'm really curious on who this king was, and what were his evil deeds that someone had written down. This death entry is both oddly specific and vague at the same time. Sheen Pao. This Pokemon can control 100 tons of fallen snow. It plays around innocently by leaping in and out of the avalanches it has caused. Okay, if we're power scaling Pokemon by their power, Shine Pao would definitely be among the strongest, because being able to control 100 tons of snow is just downright insane, and pretty scary. Also, did anyone notice that his fangs are literally Lich King swords? If there are any World of Warcraft players out there. Shiyu. It controls flames burning at over 5400 degrees Fahrenheit. It casually swims through seas of lava it creates by melting rock and sand. I never thought I'd live to see the day where a goldfish becomes a legendary Pokemon, but honestly, they nailed it because I love this concept. The thought of this fish being able to create its own stream of lava to swim wherever it pleases is pretty cool. And I guess it's technically a demon fish because of its dark typing, so it's evil. Roaring Moon. According to an article in a dubious magazine, this Pokemon has a connection to a phenomenon that occurs in a certain region. Well, that's interesting. And they're obviously talking about Mega Evolution from the Chaos region, because Mega Salamis is known as the Bloodstone Crescent. And that seems pretty close to Roaring Moon's name. I wonder if from wherever this Pokemon came from, Mega Evolution is a permanent thing. That'd be pretty cool. Iron Valiant. It has some similarities to a mad scientist's invention covered in a paranormal magazine. So pretty much, this is like Mewtwo but for 1 billion years in the future. And I guess supposedly this mad scientist is the one responsible for all the futuristic paradox Pokemon. 
Corydon. This seems to be the Winged King mentioned in the old Expedition Journal. It was said to have split the land with his bare fists. Oh dang, so I guess this was the king that Woshin's dex entry reference. So I wonder what evil deeds Corydon did. Also, I wonder if this confirms that Corydon played a role in forming the regions. Because we know Regigigas moved the continents to where they are today, but is Corydon the one responsible for splitting them up? That's pretty cool if true. Miraidon. Much remains unknown about this creature. It resembles Cyclozer, but is far more ruthless and powerful. So this just shows that Cyclozer is the modern form of the Pokemon, and that Corydon and Miraidon are the past and future variants. It's a pretty cool concept. And for these last four dice entries to make it a clean 50, they are actually repeated ones from previous games. But I thought it'd be fun to include them because I totally forgot about them. So starting off with Ditto, its transformation ability is perfect. However, if made a laugh, it can't maintain its disguise. Yeah, this is definitely coming back to me now from watching the original Pokemon anime. Dragonite. It is said that somewhere in the ocean lies an island where these gather. Only they live there. I just find that so cool. Muck. It's thickly covered with filthy vile sludge. It's so toxic, even its footprints contain poison. My question is, what footprint? Does it literally have feet under all that sludge? And finally, Sunkern. It suddenly falls out of the sky in the morning. Knowing it's weak, it simply feeds until it evolves. Okay, so Sunkern just magically come from the sky and that's how they're born. Though, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool inception for a Pokemon. And there you go, 50 shocking Pokedex entries for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And before we end it off, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. And man, this wall is what I needed 10 years ago. Like literally, you see this football card? Yeah, this was my wall from back when I was in high school, and I always found it annoying how humongous it was. And eventually, I swapped over to this wallet that was a lot smaller. But I'm telling you, if I knew about the Ridge wallet, I would have definitely chosen it. Because just look at it in comparison to both my old wallets. It's a no-brainer. And with the Ridge wallet, I love how discreet it is. It stores all my important cards very nicely, and on top of that, it has a money strap. So all my bills are secured without taking up a lot of room. And I also love how it looks. It's very simple and stylish, just what I'm looking for in a wallet. And Ridge even has a key case, which shows all my keys discreetly too. So no noisy pockets, which is awesome. So yeah, if you want to grab your own today or give it as a gift for the holidays, use my link down below in the description to get 40% off through December 22nd. Again, use the link ridge.com slash dobs. And a big shout out to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it, guys. Hey, you want to watch something funny? Well, click on the end card right here and watch my 20 most ridiculous Pokedex entries video. I guarantee you will laugh at least once. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.